Hello everybody, my name is Benjamin Summer. I am a senior park student here at Ithaca College. Um, today we are going to be going over some of the basics of the Carrera video switcher here in uh, the studios that we have. So yeah, let's get started. For today, we are just going to focus on this rectangle of buttons here. Yes, the switcher has many, many more. There's a row of buttons up here and a row up here and plenty of things up here to press. It's all fun to press this stuff, but when you're first learning, it's best to focus on just this row here. This is where most of the stuff happens when you are using the switcher. I'd, I'd first like to explain preview and program buses to you. This is the preview bus here, these rectangle row of white buttons here, and the one above it, the red one, is the program bus. These control what are viewed in your preview and program on the monitors that are in the studio. So if you go here and you click this button here, camera two will now be viewed in the preview window. And if I was to put handheld up here, now you can see it in program on the video that you are seeing. So I explained how you can pull up a camera in preview and in program. But the switcher also allows you to switch which camera is in preview and which is in program. So right now I have handheld in program and I have camera two in preview. This cut, these cut and audio buttons down here will switch the sources for you. So if you hit cut, for example, they switch with a clean cut. But if you were to hit auto, instead it will do a cross dissolve. And this number here, 20, is the number of frames that uh, it will take to dissolve. Now we're gonna talk about another crucial element of using the switcher, and this is your keys. On this switcher, we have four. One, two, three, four. They are all colored, different colors for your convenience, because otherwise it would be very confusing. Today, we're just gonna be using key one because it, leaves, it makes it simple. So, keys, what are they? Well, basically they can be things like images or videos or graphics that you wanna overlay over something else. For example, today we are using a lower third. This is pretty standard in uh, any kind of news television program. Uh, gives you information on the story that's being talked about. We use this a lot in Newswatch. So, to take keys and to put them over um, a camera, we have to come over here, back over to the cut in the audio area. Now, if you look before, when we cut between, this background key is lit here. But when we want to add a key, instead we're going to hit key and now you can see that background is now off. And this means that background is not going to change when we hit cut next time. So now if you look at the monitors, you can see that handheld is up and we are switching back and forth between lower third being in program and it being in preview. So again, if it's in program here, the viewer will be able to see breaking news, news watch, beautiful lower third here. But if we don't need it anymore, we can take it out and they will not see it. Having your preview window here is very useful for preparing keys. It's probably the, um, the most important use for it. Um, if you have multiple keys or you need to figure out where your key is coming from, it's useful to give yourself extra time and to not just throw things up haphazardly last second. Now, if you notice here, we have just the key changing and we showed how just the camera can change as well. That's cool, I guess. But however, what if you want to do both at the same time? Uh, this requires a technique called double punching. Now, double punching you're gonna hit both buttons at the same time. So let's say you wanna throw up key one and you wanna change the background. Now again, background is the preview bus here and key one is our lower third. So now, if you look at the monitors, not only will it add the lower third, but it will also change the camera. We showed the importance of keys and how to use them on the switcher. However, keys are very flexible, so you can actually assign a source to any key. What do I mean by this? You can make a key a camera, you could make it um, a channel of graphics on the system that we have here on the uh, graphics machine. You can make it images that are stored on this uh, video switcher directly. 
and you can make it other uh, other uh, program buses, but that's a little more complicated. We're not gonna cover that today, but it allows for some cool techniques. Today, I'm just gonna show you how you can assign uh, different sources to a key. So to do this, you're gonna come over here to this panel of keys up here. Now, if you compare them to what I showed you before by the cut and the auto keys, you'll notice these two arrows. And this, uh, this signifies that this is a key assignment. You're going to hold this down and you'll see that it remains lit. And then you're gonna come over to this bus of buttons here. This is the assignment bus. So right now we have it saved to CG1. This is where our lower third that we had before is saved. But we can assign it to still store one, for example. And now if we bring up the key, you can see that we have an OTS. Pretty cool. We can also assign it to things like cameras, like I said. So if we want to assign it to camera one, now it is camera one. And while it might not seem useful now because it covers the entire screen, keys allow things like resizing, rotation, um, color correction, things of that nature. So assigning ca uh, cameras to a key can actually be useful even if it doesn't seem so right now. When first starting out on the video switcher, it can be difficult sometimes to manage your keys. It's a common problem and it happens to everybody, even experienced users. We have some safeguards in place to prevent you from uh, keeping graphics on the program window that you otherwise would not want to. It happens to everybody again, so don't sweat it if it does. This is a complicated piece of equipment and it takes practice. So this is a common thing that happens. You have a key up in uh, program like we do right now. And let's say you just want to change the background and you want to leave the key up. So this is all in good, you know? I'm changing the stuff, I'm changing the stuff. But now I want to get rid of the key and I don't remember how. The right thing to do would be to double punch in this case. But again, sometimes when you're in the middle of the show, it's stressful, you have people yelling at you from all directions, you forget what to do. And that's okay, it happens to everybody. So what you're gonna do is come over here to this button here that's lit up. It says key one transition. This button can save your life, okay? If you press this, it will remove the key out of the equation completely. So it's just gone. No more stress, no more panic. It's out of sight. You can continue your show, no problem. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. I really enjoy using this piece of equipment and I know sometimes it can feel pretty intimidating with how many buttons and how many, uh, how much stuff is on this video board. But I hope maybe it simplified the process for you and maybe made you interested in trying it for a new show. Um, it's a really fun position, challenging, but feels very rewarding as you learn more about this equipment.